Toy Box Turbos. Have you played it? Ah, Codemasters. Known for their exceptional skills and realism. Whether that be across the ever-changing terrain of Rally Car to the twisting road courses of Formula One, you can count on Codemasters to give you as realistic of an experience as possible. But then there's Toy Box Turbos. If you're looking for the usual racing sim Codemasters has been nearly exclusively putting out these last few years, stop watching right now. That is not what this is. Instead of tearing up the dirt and asphalt with the wonders of modern machinery, Toy Box Turbos hands you a bunch of toy cars and lets you race them all around your house. Come on, who needs the Nurburgring when you've got a pool table, right? You start off the game with a single toy, a good old London cabbie. Other cars can be purchased with coins you receive by finishing well and collecting them along the track, as well as a final boss car you unlock by winning the last level. When I say last level, I'm referring to the last level in each class. The game is broken into seven vehicle classes, each containing four to six cars. Cars can only be raced against cars of the same class, even a multiplayer, which admittedly is kind of lame. I understand in single player you want to try to keep balance, but why can't I race any car I want against my buddy? By doing this, you're limiting my options to add a max six cars I can choose at any given time. In fact, the classes don't even matter that much. Each car has its own set of statistics, but in practice, the statistics don't seem to change much. All of the cars in this game handle like crap, but varying degrees of crap. Trying to choose a car in this game is like trying to choose between dog poop and cow pie. You don't really want either of them, but at least the dog poop is easier to clean up. The camera can also be a little dizzying at times. You can change it in the settings, but this generally just makes the controls way worse than they already are. When you've found a car you can deal with, you can head on over to single player, where you'll find one five event cup for each car class. The events take place on various household themed tracks, and can be one of six events. Now, before explaining these events, I want you to take a few seconds and watch, and what's the first game that comes to your mind. Did you say Micro Machines? Because you should have. Why should this remind you of Micro Machines? Gee, I don't know, maybe because it's made by the same developer? Anyway, for all intents and purposes, Toy Box Turbos is a spiritual successor to the series of 90s games based off the popular toy line. If you grew up with the later Micro Machine games, like V3 and V4, there is some nostalgic appeal here. If you've never played those, look up videos from Micro Machines V4 and you'll see the resemblance immediately. If you've only ever played the first two, the nostalgic appeal isn't as great. The games changed quite a bit when they jumped to 3D, so the nostalgic fact will most likely be lost for early fans of the series. So now that I just went off on a tangent, let's get back to single player modes. The cups offer a mix of the six game modes. Each mode has a three star ranking system. The better you do, the more stars you'll get. The first game mode is classic. This is just your standard multi-lap race with power-ups, but I'll get to the power-ups in a minute. Then there's the other racing game staple, Time Trial. Time trials in car racing games are notorious for being very tight when it comes to getting the best ranking, but not so much the case here. The times to beat are actually quite generous, so even those who aren't too great at racing games should be able to get the best ranking if they try. Similar to Time Trial, there's also Countdown Mode. In Countdown Mode, you need to finish with a specific amount of time left on the clock, but it only starts with a few seconds. You increase the amount of time remaining by picking up clocks along the way. These ones can sometimes be challenging solely for the fact that the crappy controls make it hard to aim at the clocks. Next there is Overtake Mode. These levels give you a target and ask you to pass that many other cars before you finish the laps. These generally aren't too bad and it just comes down to learning the race patterns. After that there is Escape Mode. In this mode, you have to outrun a wall of death at an ever-increasing speed in an attempt to reach a target distance. These levels were the only ones that really started to give me trouble, because with the crummy controls, I would either hit a wall or lose it in a corner and be engulfed by the wall seconds later. And finally, there's Elimination. This mode is only found in two places, during the boss races at the end and during multiplayer. Unlike your standard Elimination race, the camera focuses on the person in first, and you get knocked out if you fall behind the screen. Each race starts you with a half full point meter. In single player, you gain a point for winning and you lose a point for losing. First one to fill his bar wins. Multiplayer is slightly different. Toy Box Turbos has both online and local multiplayer. I wouldn't call the local multiplayer split screen because that would be a lie because the screen doesn't split. Multiplayer, both on and offline, can only be played as elimination. 
This can be fun in short bursts, but it's not going to sustain you for a long period of time. Since there are four races in multiplayer, the winner gains two points, while the next player gets one, then zero, then the last person loses one. And when you get knocked out of the round, you get to launch rockets at the people who are still in it. No. 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 Rounds are always fast and chaotic, making it a pretty good party game, but that's all it'll ever be. It's something you do with your buddies while waiting for the pizza guy to show up. If anything, it feels like it'd be a perfect mini game for something like Mario Party rather than its own standalone thing. Don't destroy me, come on. Let me win at least once. That was on Oh, you lost. Thanks. You are welcome. Now that that multiplayer tangent is out of the way, jeez, I'm really bad at staying on topic today. What's up with the power ups? Power-ups can be found in Mario Kart-esque item boxes. There's a small variety of items that are always either overpowered or pretty much useless. For example, there's an EMP pulse that slows your enemies down, but it's for such a short time and the speed drop is so minor, it doesn't really matter. On the other hand, there's a giant mallet that causes a one-hit destruction. Basically, if you get this in multiplayer, you pretty much won that round. Items aren't the only thing you pick up along the way. As mentioned, there are plenty of coins you'll need to purchase shiny new toys. Additionally, there are also 16 achievements slash trophies for you to collect. All of them are pretty much related to collecting stars and buying cars, and considering the lack of difficulty in this game, this shouldn't be too hard. Ugh, there is something I should have mentioned sooner. Difficulty and length. This game is super easy. Yeah, the controls are a little awkward, but once you adjust, this game is not hard at all. It's an easy, easy thousand gamer score. Seriously, I 100% completed this game in 4 hours. Which brings me to my next point. Toy Box Turbos is 15 US dollars. For 4 hours of play, you'll have to pay it for 15 bucks. In my opinion, this wasn't worth the 15 bucks. It's not a terrible game at all, average maybe, but it's just really short and you feel it. At the end of 4 hours, it's kind of like, that. that's it? There's just not enough content here to justify $15. If anything, maybe I was just the wrong audience for this game. I really liked the classic Micro Machines, and I was under the impression that this was aimed at people who wanted to recapture that. In reality, Toy Box Turbos is probably a game just best left for the kids. I would still recommend this though. I'll go with what I just said, it's not a bad game for the kids, and it's a really nice party game in short bursts. If you're really desperate to boost your trophy or achievement scores, this is a very easy completion, so there's that too. If you grew up with the later Micro Machine games, you'll see the similarities immediately and you might get some nostalgic feel for it, but anyone else be interested should really just wait until it comes on sale. I don't recommend this to anyone who's not going to go for the full completion. There just isn't enough content here for you, and really not even for the full completionists, but at least they'll get a little more out of it. It is not the best game for people on a budget. In the grand scheme of things, $15 isn't too expensive, but you're just not getting a lot for that money. If you grew up with the early Micro Machine games, this isn't going to give you the nostalgic feel that it's trying to be portrayed as, so probably not the best game to relive those moments. In the end, Toybox Turbos is just your average kitty arcade racer. Certainly not the worst game out there, but for $15 you could probably do better. But have you played it? If you think you might check it out, let me know below and keep playing those obscure games.